number 10, give the shape that describes each hybrid orbital set. And then we have sp3, d2. Okay, so I guess when they say give the shape, I guess we have to draw the shape of what sp3, d2 orbitals look like. The easiest way to do this is to just write down how many total letters do you see here? Well, I see that I have an S, and then when I have P3, right, or P to the third, I have three P's. So P, 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 and then I have D2, which means that I have two D's. So in this case, I have six total letters. And this basically tells me how many total orbital, hybrid orbitals, I have in my drawing. I have to draw six total. So SPPPDD, I have six total letters, six total orbitals around a center atom, aka a nucleus. So let's just say that this black dot is, you know, any nucleus, it doesn't matter, right? I'll give a real example in a little bit. But basically, this is uh, situated around a circle, just a kind of, oh boy, what kind of circle is that? That's better. So we try to draw what six orbitals would look like, right? So I'll say six total letters, that means six orbitals, six hybrid orbitals. And I have to do this in a way in which it's, it's fair, right? And the thing here is that when you have basically a octahedral, right, or an octahedron, you have six orbitals and they're all in 90 degrees with each other. So what does that mean? Well, I have one up top here and I have, let's see if I can do this right, I have one down here. So that would be, that would actually be 180 but technically, when we do this, we have one going in the back and one going in the front. Now, it's going to start kind of looking like a flower, but I'll show you the real-life example in a little bit. What I can't draw this one for some reason. There we go. And then the same thing here. It, it is One of them is technically going in the back, and the other one is going in the front. So I'm going to remove this here, and I'm going to start coloring in. So I'll color pretty quickly. Um, you can watch me if you want. How fun is that, right? We got one already down. How's your day going, right? How's studying been? We love to color. We love to color here on this channel. I mean, I love to color. Maybe my brother not so much. I always was the coloring, the coloring gal of the family. So one, two, three, Okay, four, one more, actually two more. Christina, can you count? Not too sure. All right, one more. That's good enough. And now let's just put some bond angles on here just to show you what I mean. Now, for every adjacent one is always 90 degrees. So what does that mean? Is that these two are at 90 degrees with each other. These two are at 90 degrees of each other. Maybe I'll just draw it like this. These two are at 90 degrees of each other. These two are at 90 degrees of each other. <laughs> right? And also, these two, even though they look like they're in a straight line, these are actually in a 90 degree as well because they have three dimensional characteristics. So let's just show what this would actually look like in real life. Well, we'll take maybe SF6, where we have one fluorine on the top, one fluorine on the bottom. And now these two and these two have three dimensional characteristics. So the ones in the front have to be drawn like this with these big lines, meaning that they're coming out in front of you. So I have an F here and an F here. And then the other two have to be drawn like that because that means that they're going in the back. And with this, if we just add the lone electrons around all the fluorines just to show that, you know, everything is in line with being a octet rule, 
we are all good here. And now you kind of see the three dimensions, right? So all of these would technically be all 90 degrees, just like in here. And that's it. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to helping you with more questions. So stick, stick, stick tuned. Stick around, stay tuned, stick tuned. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.